One of the main objectives of my visit to Ghana was to have a reckoning with the darkest aspect of my ancestral past as a citizen of the vast and diverse African diaspora. While I am in Ghana to attend a research conference in Accra, it was essential for me to visit the town of Elmina, the site of one of the worst genocides in human history. Located in Elmina is the whitewashed medieval Elmina Castle, built by Portuguese invaders between 1482 and 1486, years before another invader set out on a voyage of alleged discovery, only to find that other people already lived there. I'm talking about Christopher Columbus, in case you were wondering. Now back to the dark legacy of Elmina Castle. European human smugglers will cram over a thousand of our ancestors in these dungeons simultaneously, with no water or sanitation into a space that could barely fit more than 200 people. These dungeons were uncomfortably cramped. Imagine having to relieve yourself in this space with hardly any light and ventilation. Yeah, that's it. dangerous. One of the dangers for the men. In this room, about 150 to 200 men were kept here. At the same time, a transit passage the point of no return. The captives were branded hot metal with the merchant names in place here on their forehead or at their back for identification. Many of them died after receiving the shock. Our kidnapped ancestors were forced to spend upwards of three months in unsanitary conditions and wallow in their own vomit, feces, and menstrual blood before being shipped to plantations in the Caribbean and the Americas in the name of empire. At the seaboard side of the castle is the infamous Door of No Return, a portal where our enslaved African ancestors boarded ships that would take them on the treacherous journey across the Atlantic Ocean in conditions that were just as horrid as what is found here in Elmina. This was the most heart-wrenching part of the journey for me. The most horrid and disturbing aspect of this monument of human evil was the Protestant and Catholic churches built on the very top of the female dungeons. These churches were manned by priests and deacons. Churches over here, the Portuguese were Catholics. Yes. They had their church in the middle of the courtyard, and they thought they were Protestant. Uh -huh. They had their church right above the dungeon, the Dutch church. Okay. Someone so there were two churches in this castle? Yes, at different times. Yes. Okay. Yes, right up there. So the captives were here and the church were upstairs. Directly above. Yes. So directly above this enslaved dungeon. The enslaved Africans were here. The church is upstairs. Some are, used, some are saying that they use the Bible as a tool to brainwash the Africans. And we have not yet talked about the rape and child separation that occurred on the same site. Watch the bub report on Sunday, August 6th at 10 a.m. as I document my spiritual journey to the motherland.